Hello student, um, we in the last module we were discussing about the rake receiver architecture. We have discussed uh, several uh, match filter based rake receiver architectures and we ended up with a symbol basis, uh, symbol by symbol basis rake receiver uh, architecture design where the decision in the receiver is going on on the symbol by symbol basis basically and we have done the analysis over a slow frequency selective fading channel for direct sequence spread spectrum communication. Uh, in continuation of that today we will uh, learn and discuss a little bit more about the performance of this rec receiver. Let us consider that we are using uh, BPSK symbol. It is a data modulation running with uh, binary antipodal or PSK signal. So, then only a single symbol of waveform S1T will be associated with us. We do not have anything else. So, do you remember we considered the analysis in the last module as if that we have an M array signals and the signals uh, inside that array varies from hence S1T to SMT. If it is a BPSK signal, we have only a single bit going over one basis function and hence the signal is consisting of only S1 T. Hence the decision variable will be also single and uh, only U1 T will be correspondingly and that is a decision variable uh, will be associated with the L number of the multipath components that is received with respect to single symbol transmission. After down conversion of this S 1 T the BPSK modulated signal, the down converted signal will be looked like the equation 1 hyphen 11. It is nothing but we understand that V 1 T V 1 T was uh, remember we started with a signal V k T that was received that expression for V k T is there in the last equation in the last module V k T was looked like this remember where my t was the symbol duration and for uh, it was the symbol duration and uh, the t can vary from capital T plus T d we wrote T d is the delay and uh, so T plus uh, T d up to that the signal can vary and we have capital L number of the multipaths. So, the signal at the output of the receiver will be uh, the combination of all the L number of the multipaths you are receiving signal over all L number of multipaths where this C i for each and every path i, C i is the coefficient of the channel, complex coefficient of the channel getting introduced. T tau i is the delay, multipath delay associated with the ith multiple path, multipath. So, this is the multipath delay associated with the ith path. This is the channel coefficient, complex channel coefficient associated with the ith multipath. And like that you are having capital L number of the multipaths, capital L number of the C i values and T i values you are having for each and every S. In our situation S k is having only single uh, signal. So, we are having S 1 only. So, correspondingly V t will be V 1 only. Hence, I have written in the equation 1 hyphen 11 that the received signal will be the real part of this V 1 t to the power j 2 pi f c t plus some noise associated with it. And uh, now actually after we are receiving it, uh, you are coming down here the NT is a 0 mean white Gaussian noise process that, um, that, the, that you have uh, received. And uh, this was a received signal and then again you have multiplied with e to the power minus j to pi f c t to bring it down for the down conversion this section came. And uh, now let us consider two things. Number one is let us uh, substitute our value mod C i as alpha. I told that C i is a complex quantity. So, we will take a mod value of it and then we are defining a new symbol as alpha i. And we understand that k is equal to 1. So, we will put all these values slowly here. And we also saw that the maximum the i, the delay, delay will be given by i minus 1 by w. And, um, so, for the first one the delay will be 0 and the next one onwards the delay will be coming as a part of the uh, as a part of this uh, following this equation where 1 by w is the uh, time uh, duration of uh, the match filtering 
operation and W is the uh, bandwidth of the signal as well as actually bandwidth of the matched filter. And uh, if I substitute now all this expression in this 1.11 and, um, and finally, actually if we try to put the value of all this in the expression of uh, this 1.6 that we uh, developed in the last uh, module. Then finally, we will be ending up with this uh, decision variable as uh, 1 hyphen uh, 12, where alpha i will be given by mod of c i, n i is associated with capital N i is associated with the noise samples for each and every associated with each and every path. And uh, so, we are getting actually the two halves and, um, and this is the total uh, decision variable based on which actually uh, the output of the receiver will take the decision about which signal was transmitted 0 or 1. And so, if I see the output we will be seeing in seeing the last equation that the deck receiver produces a maximum ratio combining and uh, the conditional B theta probability for the maximum ratio combining hence which is a probability given by the alpha i will be uh, given by this expression where this gamma b is basically the individual the instantaneous SNR of each and every path and then you have taken the summation of all the overall the paths and uh, gamma i the SNR instantaneous SNR of each and every path is given by a signal power by the noise power multiplied by alpha i square. So, sigma into epsi into alpha i square by uh, n 0 where epsi is the uh, uh, is a reduction in the total alpha i epsi is the signal power multiplied by with the uh, amplitude or the power of the uh, it is a power of the channel coefficient that we are getting. So, basically it is a reduction of the signal power that you are taking in the top and there is a noise power in the bottom. And uh, See, the in the rec receiver we understand there is this alpha i associated with the, the computation of the signal power, final received signal power, it is actually will be different for the different multipaths. that is why it is having a variation over i. So, we need to find out the mean value of i and um, uh, therefore, actually this is the parameter who will largely deviate the computation of this B theta probability in the receiver that we understand. If uh, in a practical scenario most of the cases we understand that this uh, channel coefficients are really distributed and if it is so then this power this SNR value the gamma i the SNR of each and every path will be exponentially distributed and it will have the exponential probability density function given by the expression 1 hyphen 15. Remember in the exponential probability density function we have got a factor called gamma i bar this is the average uh, SNR value that uh, SNR value that we will uh, discuss next here. This average SNR uh, for a bit in a branch i that will be given by this where actually the power is calculated c why this is called average SNR because we understood that the uh, alpha i values largely values over if the multipath number changes. So, it is alpha i is square and we are taking the mean value of it. And then you are calculating the over the mean signal channel power, you are multiplying with the actual signal power to get the equivalent signal power or received signal power at the end of that path, at the front end of the receiver. And uh, remember each of these multipaths also fades independently, so that this gamma i is statistically independent. And if this is true that the gamma i is statistically independent from each other in each and every path, then gamma b can be expressed as a sum of all this independent and exponentially distributed random variables. So, then uh, in the such situation the probability density function of gamma b uh, will be given uh, by this, where actually this uh, factor a i will be given by the another expression written in 1.18. The bit error probability, uh, it is uh, determined by averaging the conditional bit error probability which is uh, this and over the density given a by this expression, this expression we have seen in the last slide. So, if I go on deriving it and uh, then over the whole L number of the multipaths finally, 
So, a derivation yields that the error probability will be finally the summation if all the paths SINRs, SNRs are independent to each other then it will, can be given by the summation and finally, the derivation will lead us to the equation 1.20 for computation of the beta error probability for a BPSK kind of situation. Now, some uh, good points to remember. The number one is that the number of the fingers in an ideal rect receiver usually is equal to the number of the significant resolvable multipath components. But uh, in practice we understand that it is continuously changing in a mobile communication receiver and uh, then instead of attending the variable or dynamically choosing the number of the fingers on the fly in the practical communication system. What we do is actually we uh, fix it uh, to a high number and out of those high number of the fingers who for currently how many number of the fingers are giving the significant result we try to combine them only in the combiner. And um, that is a generalized uh, selection diversity that entitles of selecting this uh, LC number of the strongest resolvable multipaths among the all capital L available number of the multipaths. And then we can actually combine the maximum ratio combining in the receiver or equal gain combining of these LC number of the strong multipath components to get the output of the rec receiver. And L minus LC components are actually rejected because they are having the lowest SIR SNRs. In order to combine it, you know, in, uh, in order to choose uh, how many number of what will be the typical value of LC. We can put also a uh, threshold on the SNR values, so that it will be helpful to choose those number of the multipass having the SNR higher than the selected or the predefined threshold. Now, uh, if, uh, if the retur diminishing returns are obtained as LC increases, but for fixed value of LC, the performance improves as the L increases. because if the number of the multipaths are more and the resolvable capacity is also there in the rec receiver in the receiver architecture. So, the more number of the multipaths you can actually accommodate the more channel energy basically you can capture and uh, it will helps a lot in the channel estimation process as well as in the detection. So, uh, actually if a number of the capital L increases definitely it is a probability that number of LC will also increase and hence it is a uh, preferable to go ahead with the combination with the higher number of the multiple components. But uh, remember it involves huge complexity in the receiver. Um, so, an increase of this resolvable number of the components is potentially beneficial also to us that as I have already explained, uh, because, uh, because it is uh, caused by some natural changes in the physical environment and uh, these additional multipaths are coming up as uh, that will help us actually in improving the signal to noise ratio into the receiver into the receiver architecture. But uh, remember one thing as uh, L is increasing due to the increase uh, due to an increase in the bandwidth W it was nice, it is not beneficial means uh, L can increase in two ways right one is actually there are some changes has happened in the scattering environment that is why and another point is because that W has changed. So, if it is uh, changes because of the W only then uh, it is not a good situation for the receiver and uh, if it is uh, from the multiple paths actually uh, happening from the uh, environment then it is beneficial because some of the paths may give a very good return after reflection. Uh, so, some uh, new components uh, provide some additional diversity in such cases, but they can exhibit some favorable uh, Russian fading also because rather than the Rayleigh fading and hence that average power per the multipath component in that cases if it goes from the Rayleigh to the Russian distribution the component which will be decreasing because some composite components fragment into more numerous, but the weaker components kind of. And so, if it happens like this the estimation process of the channel parameters they become much more difficult and the fitting of this multipath components may be highly correlated also. We remember the whole competition of the error probability in the last few slides that totally depends on the fact that all the multipath components are receiving are getting received they are all independent to each other that is why we can combine them independently they can be processed independently and they are there is no correlation to each other. But if it happens you know that the 
Raleigh fading has changed to the Rishian because the new components have got added from the environment and that addition is, is such that they are highly heavily correlated to each other. And then uh, the fundamental assumption will be lost and uh, then oh, they, all the components uh, would not be independent anymore. Okay. The estimation of the channel parameters needed uh, here in a rec receiver it becomes more difficult as the fading rate increases. Uh, so, when the estimation error is uh, really very large, so if you are uh, as see, um, is, uh, happening to if you are uh, facing such kind of the environment where actually the fragmentation is occurring because of the weaker components and your uh, channel estimation is becoming is it, it is a degrading factor such that the errors are very large in that case. Uh, the use of the rec receiver that avoids the channel parameter estimation um, that can should be about that should be avoided. So, MRC always receive always requires uh, the um, estimation of all those channel parameters coherently and uh, means when estimation it is very high in such cases MRC combination is uh, not a good option to go ahead with preferably you please proceed with the non coherent post detection your equal gain combining procedure for the combiner circuit. And uh, to form of this kind of the rec receiver for binary uh, signal, we can actually then uh, replace the earlier architecture that we have uh, seen in the last module by the this architecture. So, all the taps are coming out and finally, they are having the equal gain inside they are getting added up in the equal gain combiner and here is the decision variable which is taking the decision about the transmitted symbol. We can extend actually the um, error propagation and the error probability calculation by taking two orthogonal signals. We did it first with a BPSK where the orthogonal there is a single signal S 1 T only. Now, we are having S 1 T and S 2 T both okay, for consideration. And uh, so, such that these two orthogonal signals they satisfy this equation. So, this was the last equation that we have uh, talked about in the last module and I told that uh, this in order to happen this we have a certain condition. The conditions are such that the processing gain is very high, autocorrelation function is relatively very small coherent compared to the T c and uh, over the duration of the T c and such that this happens. So, in the rec receiver definitely corresponding to two signals you will get two decision variables and remember uh, the equations are coming such that this is the contribution from the noise component and this is the comp uh, computation I mean this is the contribution from the signal part. And uh, remember uh, inside that hole we can have the real part of the noise and if I consider the real part of the noise and imaginary part of the noise hence u 1 will be divided into two halves. Decision variable for 2 also is having two parts one is the real part of the noise and also is the uh, second part is uh, uh, from the noise also. Remember this uh, second uh, decision variable that we have uh, shown it has a central chi square uh, distribution with uh, 12 degree of uh, 12 degree of freedom L is the length of the multipath channels and hence the probability distribution of that guy can be represented by this two. These are the chi square distribution probability density function for chi square distribution and where the variance is uh, denoted by this. And uh, so, we here we have reproduced the two parts once again u 2 is uh, given by this term and u 1 is the decision variable which is given by this term and we will be interested in uh, proceeding with the portion of u 1 because that is considering the signal section measure in measure. And remember that in the previous slide when we are considering the phase theta i, theta i is a um, unknown phase associated with the signal part and this theta i is uniformly distributed over the duration of 0 to 2 pi. And also remember that we have a Rayleigh fading channel. So, alpha i is um, or the amplitude of the channel coefficients they are distributed by the Rayleigh distribution only. 
and uh, so if it is a uh, Rayleigh distributor, so alpha i cos theta i, alpha i sin theta i, they are having some zero mean and independent Gaussian distributions associated here in the equation 1.25. So, this is a real part of it and imaginary part of it and both of them are having a zero mean independent Gaussian distribution. So, you will get if it is a Rayleigh distribution, you will get a mean of it. So, u 1 has an exponential distribution finally, with a mean of this where this is the average SNR for the branch number i we understand and we saw in the last uh, slides that this gamma i bar is uh, basically taking the mean of over the power of the it is a mean power taken from the channel that uh, is actually now uh, controlling the received signal power that is why the mean is about and uh, the statistical independency now this alpha over this alpha i and theta i that should be there. And uh, if they are statistically independent it implies also that uh, the terms so inside the u i the probability density function of the u i all the u 1s uh, sorry not u i u 1s are they are having some distinct values uh, for each and every this uh, i I mean for each and every branch and then actually this gamma i bar can be given with your capital N is equal to L. So, as an erroneous decision can be made if your u 2 is coming greater than u 1 that means the whole noise components are basically very high with respect to the u uh, 1 if this is the situation happening then actually the error probability will be given by this expression. What are the independent components inside it? So, for example, b i and all. So, we will be discussing it in the later slide. We will do the integration, integrating by parts for uh, computing and eliminating the inner integral and we do some changing in the remaining uh, integration variables and some simplification will yield the equation 1 hyphen 2 8. Remember that uh, we consider that, that the output the post detection uh, um, uh, equal gain combine combination is going on, it is not the MRC that is going on in the rake receiver and we will be ending up with the detection probability or given by equation 1 hyphen 28, where this b i will be given by the another expression 1.29. Remember actually this is uh, the more compact and it is considerably easier to evaluate than the classical uh, formula in a different way and the classical analy analysis of uh, this uh, uh, classical analysis of computing this probability of error over the L path number of the paths actually that uh, the main difference of this classical one and this new one is basically if you substitute the value of this gamma i bar with uh, 2 i 2 gamma i bar you will be ending up with the new one. So, we had we started with only the two different orthogonal signals we understand. So, if it is uh, two orthogonal signals having in our hand those two orthogonal signals for two orthogonal signals the probability the L will be now substituted with a value of 2 and then this uh, P B 2 will be simplified form will be like this. Remember this gamma 1 bar is the average SNR over the path 1 and for corresponding to the signal 1 and gamma 2 bar is actually the path instantaneous SNR path actually corresponding to the value path number 2. And uh, so, the path total having the two paths and actually combination of these two will be easier to understand over the over the over the uh, whole path and actually if my gamma 2 bar now finally, if it is 0 and I am not combining the signal receiving from the second one then I will be ending up with the expression like this which is a basically equal to the uh, expression of the path 1 probability uh, of getting the bit error rate over a single path basically. So, this result shows what the, the result illustrates that the performance of uh, heavily degrades if we are not combining the information over the multiple paths. So, the error probability will be high over a single path arrival and decision taken based on the single path and error probability will be definitely less 
if you are combining the signal to noise ratio or if you are combining the information basically over the multiple paths. So, it, the gain that is coming from the diversity you can combine it properly either by the EGC or by MRC you will be finally, ending up with the fact that the error probability will be reduced. Um, now, remember one thing that uh, uh, when a rec receiver um, there will be a severe degradation actually, because uh, one of these paths are giving the combiner output equal to q or 0 and it is not giving the desired signal component. And uh, this uh, not happening the desired signal component even if sometimes it happens even if the path is there, it uh, no desired signal component may occur if you are combining sometimes by the EGC by equal gain combiner and um, then rather than MRC, because MRC each and every path uh, is estimated, the parameters are estimated and the combination goes on. So, when the error probability is high and if we understand that uh, there is the existence of the multiple path, in, even after that this is happening. So, we may actually need to take a call whether we should go ahead with the choice of EGC combination or we will switch towards the MRC. And uh, in the absence of this uh, desired uh, signal component, this input contributes only the noise to the combiner and for the large values of gamma 1 bar, this extra noise causes an extreme loss of around 1 dB kind of. So, what we did actually in this rec receiver that we were tried to establish in this module, we tried to establish the fact that if we are having, uh, if we are having a BPSK signal and only signal waveform is there the where we are ending up with actually target was to calculate and see the error probability with uh, this rec receiver architecture. Then we tried to extract uh, the signal, we tried to understand actually which kind of the combiner will be based for what kind of the scenarios, if the number of the multipass are increasing where the MRC will be the good uh, way to opt or EGC will be the good way to opt and uh, how actually this increment of the L is whether it is a beneficial to us in the signal combination and detection or it is not. In that cases we have suggested to use EGC if the capital L is increasing heavily and uh, then we have uh, considered that uh, instead of one orthogonal signal if we are having two orthogonal signals and how this uh, decision variables um, will uh, keep on uh, changing us and how the decision variable will be changing and how finally, the error probability will be affected. And if actually the signal component, I mean the effective signal component is not detected at the output of the combiner, what uh, we have already signified here that what is the effect of the noise that will uh, lead us to the extreme, uh, extreme changes or actually it will cause how much amount of the changes can happen or the losses can happen on the detection process and we found that approximately 1 dB loss is expected to happen in this situation.